everyone, and welcome to um, episode two of season one <laughs> of the Animal Rights Show with uh, Jeremy and uh, with uh, with me. And so, uh, <laughs> what we're going to do is just going to do it like a, a brief um, discussion, really, kind of just a, about a couple of ideas around about this issue that's um, arise arose in the movement about um, whether we should be concentrating on creating activists first or whether we should be concentrating on vegan education which then creates vegans who then become activists and so there's some concern um, that activists become vegans but vegans don't necessarily become activists and so there's a bit of kind of frustration uh, ab about that you know we, we've kind of it's, it's kind of like quite a prevalent thing now isn't it Jeremy it seems you know yeah, and I think being open to do both, because I mean, if, if people are drawn to a certain form of activism, maybe a certain form of animal use, a certain species um, mm -hmm. of our fellow animal, I think tap into that. And then I think one of the concerns that's been raised is to not mention veganism too much, or we might scare them off, which to me, I, I don't think we should personally be worried about. I think we should be willing to broach these subjects, because if people aren't willing to engage on those subjects, they're probably not the sustainable activists that we're yeah. aiming for in the first place. Do it obviously strategically, just like we do with anyone else, but I think we should both um, engage as far as activism goes and veganism goes with whichever audience it's appropriate for. Yeah, yeah, I, I, re I really in tune with that. And um, yeah, so it, it's, it's an issue. I mean, obviously this is to do with the issue of kind of pressure campaigns and whether to go back to single issues, whether they can be abolitionized, whether they can be kind of veganized, whether they can be incorporated, and whether those two things can mesh together, which is one my position probably that there's no reason why those two things couldn't live together. So if some people want to concentrate on the pressure campaign, there's no reason why that can't feed into vegan education. You know, and um, the other question is if it's rights based or not, because I think there's campaigns that could be considered vegan could be considered abolitionist oh. that it may not necessarily be rights based. <laughs> well, that, well, that's, that's just other, a, I'm just yeah. slip that one in there. <laughs> that's just that's just a, that's just a general point about everything, really, though, isn't it? From, from <laughs> well, it is the point of the show, so if I didn't bring it up, <laughs> so so we, we we've got a we've got a guest actually, which can inform this discussion really well, uh, we think. And so um, we did a little recording with um, Bernie Wright from the Alliance for Animal Rights. So here we go. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Bernie, welcome. So uh, Bernie Wright, been vegan since the 1980s, and uh, and Bernie runs a group called uh, Afar Alliance for Animal Rights. So that that started in what 82, was it, Bernie? No, 89, Roger. 89. All oh, right. <laughs> Don't make me any older. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky we had you on. <laughs> so you could keep things straight. <laughs> and so um, you've been running the uh, Shelburne Greyhound campaign, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been running it for a number of years, nearly back to 89, but um, it was sort of intermittent with all the other campaigns. But in July, something happened that, that made me think, let's go for this. And the RTE aired a video called uh, Running for Their Lives, which exposed a lot of the atrocities in the industry. So I figured... Irish people, a lot of Irish people will see that, so now would be the time to, to focus on this. So I did. Um, I started up the demos at Shelbourne Park Greyhound Track here in Dublin, and they went on till a few weeks ago when we had to stop them. We weren't allowed to demonstrate anymore. So um, it's been going very well. A lot of things have happened. Um, it has highlighted the actual the lives of greyhounds who are used for racing. Mm. And that is really what we wanted to do. Um, we have the track down to a minimum amount of people going in. At times, there's nearly more of us than there are people going into the track. Um, and we've had, say, we normally have 50 or so at the track. We do it every week or twice a week. But we've had 350 or more mm. on the big nights. So we'll continue that anyway. Um, I've also been invited to Boston, which I went and did talks over there on the Greyhounds. And I, I, th I think the most successful time is when you give away the, the, the free cheese, the free vegan cheese, Bernie. But um, we want to. I we wonder want who brings that cheese. <laughs> yeah, and, I wonder. And a strange so, uh, man in white van comes with the cheese. <laughs> so we we want to uh, we want to talk to you about this issue about um, whether it's a good idea to create activists first or vegans first. So obviously there's an issue in the vegan movement about 
vegans who don't become activists, and then you've got the issue of activists who are not vegan. So you've, you've got an example of people who've become active in your Greyhound campaign, and now they're talking about being vegan, right? Yeah, we, we have a lot of people, and um, to be honest, the majority of people that turned up after seeing the film weren't vegan in the first place, never thought about vegan, I'd say. Um, we also had our own activists there who are long-term vegans and all the rest. I, to be honest, I, I went my own way about it. I didn't make a big issue about it. But from Roger turning up with the samples of cheese and, and the mayonnaise and God knows what else, um, it, got, it got into the conversation. And um, it, it, Roger became known as the man with the cheese. But anyway, um, People started asking questions. Sorry, I didn't life. push the issue. I, I feel really that if people, if they're told the facts, just let it, let it sit for a while, let them think about it, and I feel they'll get there eventually. Now, like everything else, some got there quickly, some didn't get there yet. So we have a whole range of people who have veganism on their mind. And lately when I look on Facebook, I realize the people posting about all the veganism and giving out about people eating dead animals, are, are the, basically a lot of them are the new people who, who veganism is, is now an issue to them. So um, it's always sort of been that way in a far. People come in and from mixing with you and going out for a cup of coffee or looking for a vegan cake or whatever, the issue comes up. I don't push it because I don't think you can make anybody vegan if they don't want to be. They seem to be sticking around. They're all there on Facebook waiting on the lockdown to end to get out there again. And um, also what I didn't mention, Roger, you forgot about, we were brought to the high court in Dublin for demonstrating. Um, they got an injunction. That this is the Irish Greyhound Board got an injunction against us. Yeah, you're a criminal, you're um, a criminal, aren't you? You're a criminal. I'm a criminal, yeah. They all, made up this story, company. yeah. Their famous story is that we put in threatening leaflets in the doors, when actually we know who did it, and it wasn't us. And the judge said it wasn't us in court, and the police said it wasn't us. Everybody vouched for us. They knew we didn't do that, and we don't work like that. And uh, we actually won the case. So it cost the Greyhound Board a lot of money, 30000 to get us into court, and another 275000 as far as I know, to, to, to pay our expenses and their expenses. So. It's been a sort of a successful story, really, but we're not at the end of it yet. The dogs will still be back running in Shelburne Park and dying behind that wall, and there's not much we can do unless we stop it. So that's the aim. We don't want regulations. We just want to stop it and hope that greyhound racing everywhere ends. You know? it, it was a shame you won the case, because I was looking forward to seeing you led away in handcuffs and stuff, but it never happened, right? So, uh... Well, I look good now. <laughs> anyway, Roger. <laughs> So, so this, this process of people becoming vegan is a kind of an organic thing. So do you have any ideas about the numbers you're talking about there in terms of, you know, in terms of how many would turn up and then how many are kind of going through this process? Do you, any idea about that? Um, well, I'd say at this stage, there's a lot less not vegan. Most people have got on to being vegan themselves. They're not questioned and they're not pushed. Um, there has been a few spats all right with, with the wrong people saying the wrong things, but um, <laughs> like even with me running the demos, they didn't even know I was running them until I was a few weeks into them. So I don't push people, no. you know, people want to do that. And I mean, my, Roger knows my opinion is it's no big deal. It's not hard to go vegan. It just means changing the stuff in your trolley and getting your head around it and being careful what you eat, you know? So, um, I mean, we all have animals around us. So, I mean, how can you eat one and pet the other, really? That's, I suppose, the way I see it. Yeah, good. I, I really like how you chose to say um, dogs who are used to race versus race dogs to really articulate oh, yeah. that that's not their purpose. We're all here in the that's other room. <laughs> a big, yeah, because it seems like as far as um, activism and veganism, the big question is, should we be concerned about, quote unquote, scaring people away? by talking about veganism too much or animal rights and how much we should actually seek those conversations out and kind of build on that empathy for dogs and expand that to, um, in that respect to other species. Is that, do you have any recommendations for maybe other groups and other organizers who are watching um, who may have some activists who aren't vegan, how to approach those things? Well, uh, I'm a long time at this and I suppose it's a personality thing. Some people are more forceful and some people aren't. 
So I sort of go with how I feel. I'm not saying that I don't come straight out with it. I do. But you can't push people. People have to get to, to, to what makes them want to be vegan. They have to get there first before they go and choose the non-vegan product. They have to have it in their head. But I suppose um, what I can't understand is the vegans that are not out on the demos and out doing that sort of stuff. That's what gets to me now. Mm. You know, let people get there as regards veganism, but let get vegans more active. If you care enough not to eat these beings, why can't you get out and fight for them? So I, I think I think you're part greyhound, really, uh, Bernie. So uh, I want I want to. Thank <laughs> <laughs> We're all animals, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I want to thank I want to thank you for coming on and kind of uh, being our reporter, our kind of roving reporter from Dublin. So thanks for that. And yeah. So, uh, yeah. so that was Bernie Wright. So uh, what do you, what do you think of that, Jeremy? Yeah, great guest. I, I'm always inspired to connect with these advocates who have been doing this for decades. You know, and I feel a, like and a, I, and a personal friend of Tom Reagan, so that's 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 yes. a real, it's a real plus. In <laughs> yeah, there's some behind the scenes knowledge shared there around what a, a great person he was. So, very interesting. Mm. Yeah, as I said uh, before, I think that these these two things can go together because I think there are some people who, I mean, Bernie mentioned personality. There are some people who don't have the personality for education, and there are some people who don't have the personality for pressure campaigns. You know that they they don't like the idea of say doing home visits, which is controversial, for example. There is there is a space for both of these, but I do think that they need to be kind of meshed together. And then it's yeah, versus question. being siloed. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't tapping into people's strengths because I think the best form of activism is the forms that we're passionate about and can do sustainably. You know, so mm. tap into our strengths. And, and, and flow with those strengths. Mm, well, that implies then that the, the key to that then is that the group that are doing one thing shouldn't attack the group doing the other. And, you know, in, in fact, they should kind of find ways of kind of working together, you know. So to advocate for one thing wouldn't involve attacking the other. I mean, if part of a pressure campaign uh, results in getting some kind of undercover video, for example, or some documents, I don't know, from a lab, say, there's no reason why that can't be given to the street activists for their street, you know, and say, oh, by the way, you know, this, this came out of the road, you know, you know, so those things can, they can live together in, in the same way as that kind of thing used to happen in the, in the 80s. So I don't see why we couldn't resurrect that part of it. And there's no need to see these two things as distinctly separate at all, I don't think. Oh, I think solution-based dialogue, could, we could definitely have more of that in the movement. I think around the rights-based discussion and many others, really focusing on what can be done versus, oh, you're not doing this. Mm. So maybe people can give us um, their thoughts about this in the, in the comments. You know, do, you, do you think pressure campaigning, single issues can live with vegan education, or do you think that they're kind of antagonistic? Uh, I don't, but I mean, if you do, tell me why. You know, tell us why in the, in the comments. It'd be really interesting. And maybe so, in the future we can get some live guests on that can um, we and we can explore these issues further. Yeah, live guests. That's what we need. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> better we, than dead ones. Yeah, we're better for all the dead ones. <laughs> <laughs> right. So on that note, <laughs> okay, folks, we'll uh, we'll see you again. Bye for now. <laughs> see you next time. Give me that ding, give me that, give me, give me that, give me that ding.